the title for my sermon today is using the word of God as your compass or as your GPS to face the years ahead. Amen. Using the word of God as your compass or as your GPS to face the years ahead. So, can somebody read me John 1.1? 1, 1. The book of John 1.1. 1, 1. And while somebody is doing that, can I also have another person look into Colossians 3.16? John chapter 1, the verse 1. Amen. Let us hear the word of the Lord. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Amen. 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 Somebody please read me Colossians 3.16. Colossians 3.16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, mm -hmm. teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Amen. 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 So we've all had a common thing here the word. Yes. The word. The word. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, before we begin the new year, I know we have begun. We are already, today is the day 15th. Yes. Before, I want us to put our old, away the old behind us. Mm -hmm. The old 2022. Let's put that away. Let's put that behind us. Only as we forgive others and forgive ourselves, can we have a happy new year. Mm -hmm. So you cannot say that you are having a happy new year while you are still holding on to the past. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says every day he gives us new mercy. Mm -hmm. Prophet has just said his mercies are for us every day. Every day we see new mercies and his grace. So that's when we have a happy new year. The first step is to make peace with our past and the relationships that have been broken through unforgiving. You see, on 30th of December 2022. I received a phone call from my brother, Kojo. I think he's been here, you all know him. And he said, our cousin is coming to see him, and our cousin wants to see me. This cousin was the one that I was living with when I was in Ghana, that they really abused me. So it's been years I haven't seen him. He lives just two hours away from Stoke on Trent. So I made up every excuse you can tell. You see, the excuse was, I didn't trust how I would face the situation. I was doing everything with my own power, and that was wrong. So I said to my brother, go to, when is he coming? He said, he's coming on the 31st of December. And I said, oh, on 31st, I'm not available because I'm thinking that I need to do her hair. I'll be at home around 5, thinking by that time you should be going. So my brother said, that's fine. Then my brother said, it's not about him, Joe. It's about his children and wife that we don't know. I said, I know what you are saying, but unfortunately, I'm not the one doing the hair, so that's the time I'll be at home. I took my time. I got home at quarter past five. My brother called, hey, woman, where are you? I said, I've just been back at home. He said, yeah, we are on our way coming. I said, no. So I quickly ran to pastor. I said, pastor, please, this cousin of mine, is coming. So, Pastor said, so, let him come. So, he came, I'm upstairs, they knocked the door, Daniel opened the door, they sat down. I was shaking because of the pain, the anger. You know, when people think they can abuse you, only you need you when they can abuse you. But when they don't need you, they think they can abuse you. That was the situation I faced when I was growing up in Ghana. We no man know that. So you can see my story. He, there were four in the family, he's the third one. I'm older than him, but there was a past in the family. No other generation can discipline younger ones. So he saw he was with his mom and dad. So he thought he could abuse me, use me, kick me, do everything he thinks he can do to me at that time. He has come to my presence, my home. I went on my knees and said, Father, if I go with my emotions, I will not trust myself. What do I do? You know what the Lord said to me? 
my grace is sufficient enough for you to do it. I said, Father, what are you asking me to do? He said, my grace is enough for you to forgive. I came downstairs. I didn't know how the reaction was going to be. The moment he saw me open the door, he leaped and hugged me. I've been seeing him for over 25 years. He won't let go. Everybody is standing. The children are going, whoa, whoa. Everybody is standing. He's holding me tight. He's saying sorry. Hallelujah. Sorry for the pain I caused you. Yeah. I was a child myself. Hallelujah. I found God for his grace. At that time, I said, Father, should I embrace? Should I be cold? What do I do? I don't know. Something took over me and I just held him. Jesus. He won't go now. He he's not. He wants to stay. Me, rubbish dump. Now he come to hug me. Praise God. And thank God that was done on the twenty-first of December before I was able to move on crossover. So that's what the Lord did for me. Over twenty-five years, half of a century. For quarter of a century, I've been holding on to the pain that I endured as a child. And just that, everything disappeared. Amen. We serve a living God. Amen. Romans 14, 7, 8, it says, For none of us live for ourselves alone, and none of us dies for ourselves alone. If we live, we live for the Lord. Amen. And if we die, we die for the Lord. Amen. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Amen. The people of God need to stop dabbling in religion. Grow in spiritual maturity. We need to stop playing church and stop being the church. Amen. By demonstrating the transformation that has occurred within us as a result of an absolute paramount commitment to Jesus Christ. There is no excuses no more when it comes to the Lord. No but, no gifts, no difficult, no any circumstances must replace our Redeemer. Amen. So how do we use the word of God as our compass to face the years ahead? There are three truths. The first truth is to believe there is only one true God of the Bible. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Only one true God. The second truth is to believe that a person comes into the relationship of God and by God's grace through faith in Jesus Christ. And the third truth is to know that we believe the Bible is the inspired word of God that guides our lives and our actions. In Timothy, he says, all scriptures is God's spirit and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in religiousness, in righteousness, sorry. So the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Could you tell your neighbor there is goodness in you? There is goodness in you. Actually, let it be best that there is goodness in me. There is goodness in me. There is goodness in me. You are not a mistake. So where do we find these words of truth to inspire our growth in the Lord? Uh, I like football. Hey. Really? Yes. And recently I discovered that there is an FBI among us. Hey. Yeah. FBI! Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Full blooded Italian! Hey. 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 Yeah, I'm 
put it right here. <laughs> so, we all know that Joel is a footballer. Yes. He plays, he's good, and he's also MVR. Yeah? Praise God. Amen. So, now, the basic of football, and Joel will correct me if I'm wrong, is to take the ball across the goal line and score. That's what they tell you. It's not about who played well. It's not about how many fouls, how many touches, possession. It's got nothing to do with that. It's all about scores. Yes. Good. So if that is the basic of football, then what do you think the basic of Christianity is? The basic in Christianity today is the word of God. The word of God. To face the years ahead, we need to take, we need to look back into the basis of Christianity, and that is our Bible. The main objectives of the Bible is to show you how to have a relationship with God and how to receive the gift of salvation offered to mankind freely. Both words should be basic to a Christian as food was to a game of football. The word of God tells us who God is, how much God loves us, how to receive salvation, the best way to live our lives, and how to treat others, how to maintain relationships, and all life aspects. Every question about life is in the Bible, and most importantly, the answers to the Bible tells us that all scriptures are God's spirit. Just like God breathes life into Adam and Eve, the word of God breathes life into us as believers. And the word of God is alive. It's not like any other word of God that God gives. But God gives us his power to be active in our lives. The word of God. Paul says in the book of Hebrews, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing soul and spirit, joins and marrow, it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. And Matthew puts it better. He says, For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of pen, will be enemies disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. So, if that is what the Bible is telling us, that we should go into the basin. Today, Prophetess Esther said there was a centurion that it was his servant that was not well. And he tried to seek the face of the Lord. And he said, I am not worthy of, but just say your word. And if the word can travel across Jerusalem yeah. to go and heal the servant, then the word of God is very active. Yes. Yes. So let's look at the 10 examples of how the word of God can bless us and you and we can use that as our compass for this year. Number one, we are born again through the power of the word. The seed that brings forth the new creation in the born again experience is the word of God. Our new life comes from the living word that we hear and receive by faith through the power of the Holy Spirit. So when we are born again, we receive a word. God becomes active in us. Number two, the word is the source of our faith. You cannot say that I have faith when you don't read your Bible. So the word creates faith, both for the new birth and for the living victoriously as Christians. We, we ever feel like we lack faith, Immerse yourself in the word and you will become strengthened as your faith increases. Number three, as believers, we will know God through his word. We go to school and we hear the teachers talk and we know them by their word. Bring this assignment in by this. That is their word and their command. As a Christian, what word are you taking on the day? So as believers, we will know God through the word. Amen. Through a daily and consistent study of the Bible, we grow, in, we grow in our knowledge of God and learn to glorify and honor him. Otherwise, how can we trust and obey a God we do not know? Proverbs says that, tell us that if we accept God's words, we will understand the fear of the Lord and follow.
find the knowledge of God. Amen. The word of God, number four, is our spiritual food. At every stage of our Christian life, the word of God is the nourishment we need to grow and mature in Christ. We've all heard when Jeremiah Christopher preached about growing up, and he was talking about not just eating clean, he eat me clean, eat clean. Growing up in our spiritual, in, 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 in God. And we can only do that when the word inspires us. Amen. Number five, the word of God is our guide. We were all here on the first night, or if I'm mistaken, maybe on the first, when Minister Shami said she was coming from all of all the way, and she, she couldn't put her GPS. It was not working for her. She tried everything. It was not working for her. Imagine if she didn't know God. And she thought that I can only trust this machine to bring me hope. What did she say she did? She said she caught the Bible, everything to do with protection and guidance. The word of God. As she was proclaiming and quoting and proclaiming, when she got to the point where she would have missed, it started working. Amen. That is the power of the word of God. Amen. The word of God, number six, is our health. Our health. You cannot say you are not well and say, and just use your mouth, I am not well, I am not well. What are you doing about it? Mm. We know God created doctors, but you pray to the doctor of all doctors, Amen. then you see the heavenly doctor. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Number seven, the word of God provides victory from our sins, as it happened to me on the 31st of December. I would have crossed over with unforgiveness heart. Because I was so, as long as I wasn't, I'm not seeing them, I'm not feeling it. But the moment the name is mentioned, or I see them, I'm a human being. It takes me back. It takes me back when there was no parents, no mom and dad, nothing. When hunger was your, your friend. When you go and you don't even want to come back, but who will take you in? When you think you've seen hardship, you've seen nothing. But thank God on 31st of December, he reminded me that his grace, his grace is, a, is enough for me to forgive. So the word of God provides victory from our sin. When we spend time studying and meditating on God's word, it strengthens our spirit and enables us to withstand any temptations. He says in the book of Psalms, I have hidden my word in your heart that I might not sin against you. This is David yes. saying to the Lord. Could you imagine you get up in the morning and you say to the Lord, your word is in my heart that today I might not sin against you. So you know temptation will come. The moment you start declaring this to the Lord, that is when the enemy says, ha, let's see if you can fulfill it. The moment, that is when you get up in the morning and everybody starts to anoint you. That is when you go, you put your car here and nothing is white and, and you don't know where to go. Or to just, and you say, I've hidden your word in my heart that we know not sin against you. Ah, hallelujah. Yeah. Number eight, the word of God is our tool for spiritual warfare. Hallelujah. Have you just gotten up early in the morning and you see that there is a warfare in your room? You feel that like your spirit is everywhere. And then you just get up and go tada katole kinamayamama. You start quoting the words of God. And then any atmosphere at that time just disappears. Because the Bible says all authority and all power has given to Christ. Number nine. The word of God is the source of truth that sets us free. God's word is the unchanging source of truth. It does not sway in the direction of public opinion or the ideologies of modern culture. As we accept the infallible word of God, it cleanses us, it sets us free, and it takes us away from bondage of sins. It makes us holy. And finally, number 10, the word of God revives and strengthens us. 
as today we went through the fellowship and we studied the word of God and it strengthened us. I remember our dear brother Nobby sharing when he fellowship with the right kind of people, he's motivated. He feel like anything that wants to come over him, any hope, any darkness disappears because he's among brethren. Hallelujah. Amen. So, the word of God, it revives and strengthens us. When we feel emotionally drained, when we feel anxious, when we feel depressed, we can always count on the word of God to comfort us, to revive us, to strengthen us, and to give us peace. You know, we all know the story about Jesus Christ being tempted. After he's been baptized by John the Baptist, the Bible says that the Spirit took him to the desert. Desert, that is African. Uh -huh. yeah. And then while he was talking to our ancestors <laughs> in the wilderness of the desert, after he was been 40 days and 40 nights, the Bible says that Satan approached him. If it was me, and I see my enemy standing in front of me, oh! I would say, Satan, today, hey, I don't have fast yet, but today, I will make strong, I will put you in peace, I will lock you up, ah, don't, don't be shy now, you know, when you see your enemy stand there, you know that he's the enemy that has been thrown from heaven, landed on earth, and then you see his and he goes to heaven to complain. You see Job. You see Joseph. You see Daniel. You see Sister Akira. You see Joseph. You see Sister Shami. You see General. Set a dance that job. There he bases. He goes to heaven. Uh -huh. You see Minister Kevin. Let's see. Imagine now, face to face with your enemy. I thought that you let him pass. No. That's why you only can take Jesus home. Because you know Jesus will be soft. <laughs> hey, he tempted him. Hungry. 40 days, 40 nights. He's starving. The first temptation was turn this stone into bread. <laughs> you and I let me be like, God, you know I pray though. Forgive me, but you know I'm starving. <laughs> we do before. Yes. yes. He was caught in. The devil was caught in the book of Psalms. Yes. Didn't he say that the angels will catch you so your feet are not in the stone? Yes. Mm. And the Lord has to put him the throne. Yes. You not just your father. Mm. What is the word that you take to tell the enemy not to test you? Amen. Jesus even had the word, even though that he is the word. Amen. He had the word. Amen. So what word do you get up in the morning to say this is my defense mechanism? Mm. This is the word of God I'm using today. Amen. Today, I put your word in me that I will not stay. What word do you put when your enemy tempts you? Hallelujah. What word do you put when they say there is no more job opportunities? Mm. What word do you put when your marriage is in trouble? Mm. What word do you put when your children are rebelling? Mm. What word do you put when you have no food in the fridge? What word do you put when there is sickness in the body? What word do you put when you feel suicidal? What word do you call? When everybody is putting their hands on you and calling you the names and putting you down and slapping on your face and spitting on you and telling you you are good for nothing. What expectations do you have? When everything you pick on scrambles, what word do you base on? Do you just watch his standards and watch how Kat and Afi started their relationship and say, at least Afi brought a flower. So maybe if my husband brings me a flower, everything will be okay. Huh? Or do you just watch the monarchy and see how Harry holds Megan's hand and say, maybe if we start working and holding hands, then it will be all right. Do you open your own game magazine? Or do you put on the television that is just poised with lies? Or do you say, let me hide in my corner and watch something so that it can entertain me? What word do you stand on to face your troubles ahead? 
that. You see, our GPS, it can only take us that far. Because according to the express dot com that you pay, 87% of the people do not even trust our books. I don't know whether you put in a stop of your address and it's taking you in a wrong direction, thinking that it's just giving you a short direction, and by the time you realize you are in somewhere, ooh, ooh, ha, ha. <laughs> well, in America, a young woman, just the age of 23, had a son, a six year old, decide to just go to a place she's never been, but she's taking her son with her. She didn't pack well. She's only 23. 23, in this country, you are mature. But back home, 23, when somebody is 23, you're still under the roof of your parents. So she sat in the car. Only thing she took was a tiny drink for the child. She thinks, I'm putting deep here. Ba, 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 I'm going here, here. Oh, they say the journey is only two and a half hours. She says, yeah, when I get to somewhere, I can buy you McDonald's somewhere. I can change somewhere. I've been there. I said, okay, when you're going, you are hungry, Dalia. Time is delayed. I'll get you food on the way. Yeah. When they go to a place, GPS said, turn left, turn right, turn left, turn right, turn left. You go to a point that she's going to a ditch. Car is stuck. She can't move the car. And she's going far ahead in the place and he says, uh, uh, out of the road. Then the story will turn back. She's with a tiny child, six years. She has no help, there's no reception, so she can't use her phone. Her only survivor is to be with the car. She put a lipstick and put SOS, save our soul, in front of the, which, in the, the, the mirror. Six days, somebody was just flying their plane and they saw a car abandoned with SOS on it. Six days, by the time they alert the police, for the police to get there, she can barely even talk. Dehydration, the child has died. Satnav told her to take that path. Satnav told her that she will reach her destination within two hours. It took six days. What the only word she could say was son, 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 son. She was trying to tell them, my son, the boy was born. Dehydration. I don't know what you are going on today. I don't know what you, you, you so many things happen. We can either trust on the sad nerve of people, trust on the sad nerve of magazines, trust the sad nerve of government, trust the sad nerve of our teachers, trust the sad nerve of our bankers, or we can trust the word of God. Amen. That gives life, Amen. that gives hope, Amen. that revives our soul, Amen. that teaches us to forgive, Amen. that teaches us that He is the Lord. And even if we get lost, His mercy is so sufficient enough to bring us back. Amen. Once we equip ourselves with the Lord, with the Word of God, we will flourish like a palm tree. We will grow like a cedar of Lebanon, planted in the house of the Lord. We will flourish in the courts of our God. We will still bear fruit in our old age. We will stay fresh and green, proclaiming the Lord is upright. He is our rock, and there is no weakness in him. May the love of our God guide you as you spend time with our maker, our soul, this year. And the years ahead, I pray the word of God will be your compass as you face the years that are yet to come. At least even as you face the day. Studying and knowing the word of God is easy these days because of technology. Before we needed someone to study and be gifted with the Holy Spirit to, to narrate on our behalf. 
That's why we have so many prophets now. God said, God said, God said. What is God saying to you? What do we? Now the curtain or the partition is torn and the middleman is removed. You can boldly come to the Father anytime, wherever, whenever, and always because he's available and ready to make friends with you. If you don't know how to get into the Bible, there is an app called you version. And if that is something that you can download, uh, YouTube, we have our own Jebra. He's got a beautiful website. We've got our own Pastor Kevin also. Beautiful website. Everything to do with biblical base. So it's not human emotions or anything. Everything to do with a uh, Bible. Speak to them. Subscribe to their channel. See what they are doing for mankind. And follow in Jesus' name. 